So the next technique we're going to look at is partial fraction decomposition. Um, so this is, this is a method that you're going to use for integration of rational functions. Okay, so remember that by, by rational we mean that we're looking at integrals of the form, so there might be a polynomial on top, say a0, a1x, up to say a m, x to the m, divided by some other polynomial, say b0, b1x, down to b n, x to the n, and we want to integrate with respect to x. Uh, now, partial fraction decomposition is, is actually really an exercise in algebra more so than it is in calculus. Um, it's using algebra to manipulate this expression to get it into a form where it's a sum of simple terms where we know how to integrate each term. Okay? Um, and so what the partial fraction decomposition relies on, it relies on the fact that It relies on the fact that all polynomials can be factored into linear and quadratic terms. Okay? So by linear term, we mean, of course, factors of the form, let's say, ax plus b. Quadratic, we mean factors of the form ax squared plus bx plus c um, that are irreducible. So typically, if it's an irreducible quadratic when we complete the square, we expect that we get something that's going to look like, you know, a times x minus some, say, x naught squared plus some other number squared. Um, I've used a, b, c, I don't know, let's call it uh, d squared, something like that, right? Um, so typically we, what we do is we, we factor the denominator into linear and quadratic terms. We, we break it down completely as far as we can, right? And we try to split things up so that we have one term for each factor, right? And one of the assumptions that we'll make here is that um, m is less than n, so the degree of the numerator is smaller than that of the denominator. Um, if it's not, well, then the first thing you'd have to do is, is do some long division, right? So. If the degree of the numerator is bigger than or equal to the degree of the de denominator, the very first thing you should do to simplify algebraically is do long division. Um, having done long division, the next thing that you're going to do is try to factor that denominator. And of course, that maybe is easier said than done, but you're going to try to do it. Obviously, the, the problems that you're going to encounter in a calculus class are ones where that factoring is, is going to be relatively straightforward, or we wouldn't ask you to do it. Okay? Um, and what we want to do is we want to take this integrand and we want to we want to split it up into basically you know terms that look like say some constant over say ax plus b or maybe some other constant times you know it's possible that a factor like that is is repeated so we might have have a repeated factor like that um, and we might have let's say an irreducible quadratic, like let's say x squared plus, plus c squared, something like that. Uh, and it turns out that actually you might have, right, the numerator might look something like that, right? If we've got a quadratic on the bottom and we want to make sure that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, well, that still allows for a degree one numerator. Um, and so we want to split things up. Like, so we might have higher powers, but we want to split things up into terms that look like this because we know that if you're doing the antiderivative of, 
let's say ax plus b, okay? Well, we can do a simple u substitution, right? If u is equal to ax plus b, du is, is a times dx, so 1 over a du is, is dx. And we sub all that in, and we know what we, we're going to get, right? We're going to get 1 over a times the natural log, the absolute value of ax plus b, right? If we had something that was, say, a power, ax plus b to some other power, where n is, say, bigger than 1, well, we know what to do here. Right now it's just power rule, right? Because this would be the same thing as ax plus b to the minus n. Power rule says add 1 to the exponent, so we get ax plus b to the minus n plus 1, 1 over a out front, and we have to divide by that minus n plus 1. Let's write that as 1 minus n. Okay, So we can easily do integrals of that form. Um, if we have something like this, well, actually, there's, there's two possible terms there, right? If I have something that looks like, say, um, x over, over, say, x squared plus c squared, well, again, we can do a u substitution. Let u, if u is equal to x squared plus c squared, right, then 1 half du is equal to x dx, and we get 1 half natural log of x squared plus c squared. And finally, if we have integral of, of just 1 over x squared plus c squared, well, we've seen that one as well, right? So this is going to give you an arctan integral. Um, if we bring the 1 over c out front, so we get x squared over c squared, you think we have, we'll double check this, I think it should be this, 1 over c arctan x over c, right? So, so all of these are, are straightforward integrals that we know how to do. So the goal in doing a partial fraction decomposition is to take some intimidating looking rational function that we're trying to integrate and, and using algebra rewrite it into a sum of terms where all of them are of one of these forms where we know exactly uh, what the antiderivative should look like.